Ah, we both have headsets on. How official. Mm. Hello, Houston. Yes. Live from Salt Spring Island. You look already kind of shiny. Ah, yeah. Well, you know, I've been sweating it up this morning, trying to hit the workouts. It's a Sunday. It's a Saturday. So, mm hmm. That and also, I, you know, just trying to put some, uh, trying to keep moisturized. You know, at our age, it's important to uh, keep ahead of the curve. Our age, I think. <laughs> I think you're being kind. <laughs> we are. Uh, yes, we're in the same boat on many fronts. And so. He, here we are. You're on Salt Spring Island. I have something in my eye, and um, yeah. Okay, I'm hoping the technology of blinking will actually help with that. We always have exciting beginnings. Yes. Mm hmm. You have a beautiful faux finished wall behind you. I, I see you don't have your sheep anymore. Ah. Uh, the sheep is out to pasture. Yeah. I, uh, I'd like to, to say that I'm in a very, uh, down mood. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, let's, let's use the opportunity to hopefully deconstruct some of that. And, uh, yeah, I understand a down mood. I've been in very much down moods for, for months and I think sometimes years at a time. So I, I think I get that. I ran, like, it's kind of like running out of the, being the horse and running out and then going in the world and then just kind of like meeting reality. And uh, the seeming overwhelming complacency and then just the amount of work it takes to do anything. And then if you, your own world, like the transition from a kind of stable home into being on the road and thinking I'm going on the road and I'm going to go do something. And I just hit the road and then I just tank. My body gave up. I couldn't, be, I wasn't productive anymore. I basically, and then just had a hard time transitioning into the human world. And then pretty much all that added up to, you know, just tanking and, mm. not, and then spending a couple of weeks recovering from attempting to, to get going. <laughs> it's easy uh, to misstep when it comes to times of transition and uh, especially being on the road, as we know it, it, it is, it takes everything to really, I am, um, it's like you really have to be quite strict with yourself. At least I do. I have to be really strict with myself because I have so many particular um, rituals, schedules to actually keep myself in the zone that I, I feel recognizable to myself. And so I guess like a Ferrari, I, I run really well, but I have to be so specific with, with that. <laughs> Well, I feel like an old truck who maybe I don't have to be specific, but it, it breaks down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the truck uh, or thinking that, that you're the truck, but you're actually the Ferrari. And you have a really, you know, if you want to be on that all star team, then. Uh... <coughs> I've been spending the morning trying to talk people into consistently uh, working out and meditating. So I think that that's, that's my mode right now. Well, you certainly yeah. look a lot happier than me. So, I mean, that's, that's generally a good sign for enrollment. And uh, it's hard to get people hyped if you're just like, eh. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> what is it that you, like, um, and so you are um on salt spring island right now i just want to get a sense of uh, where are you and what are you up to I, I i know you arrived there a week ago 
yeah, maybe 10 days, I started camping on the ocean uh, with Chinoa and uh, another friend, Lisa, a new friend. And that was gorgeous and beautiful, but it was basically my knee, my left knee gave out and I was, it was swollen. And I was having a very hard time walking and bending and doing anything. So I basically was kind of walking wounded for the last kind of 10 days. It's the beginning of the, my knee not hurting and kind of becoming human again. But the, I tell you, the knees are very important. If, 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 you, if you got a bad knee, it's in pain, you can't do a lot of things. There's certain things which need the knee. <laughs> Like bending, moving, yeah, in general, squatting. Yeah. Yeah, those, those, those are really critical, critical things. Like it's the basics. It's hard to get doing the bigger things if you, you can't do the basics. And uh... and, and so your, you, um, your knee right now is at a, what's your level of pain now? I think it, it seems a little like it's, it's getting better. Yeah, like I started taking some turmeric, some double turmeric or something like that. It helps with the inflammation. Yeah. And uh, I was rubbing CBD oil on it. wasn't really doing much. Uh, I was taking painkillers. Sort of just, you know, if you're not physically well, it's hard to focus on anything. Yes, it is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My biggest thing, cause I have, uh, I manage pain, uh, really actively because of, um, yeah, just basically a genetic thing where my joints go out of joint a lot. And, um, and so I, I do a lot of work to stabilize my, myself and build up those areas but also um, just avoiding all sugar and all, uh, for me, it's all grains and, night and nightshades. And that, and that is really what keeps the pain away. Yeah. No sugar. Yeah. Because sugar is such an, an inflammatory. So you're taking the turmeric and then you eat sugar with it. And what and what are we doing, right? We're like we're, we're, the, the. now. I normally wouldn't really recommend heating up honey, but it is better than uh, sugar in your coffee. And so, what a wonderful option is that you can actually have some honey. It's so tasty. Mm. What did you think of that article out in Nanaimo of the people on the food strike? That seemed uh, a bit out of the blue and seemed like a nice, it was nice to hear. Yes. Yeah. Like some, somebody stepping up, you know, like in a big way. I feel, um, I feel very motivated by other people. And when we've been looking at doing um, some work with, with the old growth forest, it was, um, I didn't know if, you know, the pandemic just stole everyone's thunder or if there was actually some meaningful action going on. Because mm. out of all of this, the one group that are not stopping is industry. You know, they are carrying forward. Um, yeah, from, uh, you know, from the mining industry to forestry, they're they're carrying on uh and so you know we as we talked about for so long what um you know last year was the year of the the, the protest to now when you know people are arguing about whether to put on a mask or not and and so we are like <laughs> all of our power it has been pitted against ourselves and so yeah i i was really moved and and excited and um and want to go see them or want to support them in some way yeah what's been going on with you uh, um with have you um been up to see them yet or no 
you know, I'm again, sort of still recovering and I don't know, like it's, it's, I find it, I was in a real groove with the work and going back on the road is kind of like the lifestyle I used to have. And it, it, it's just, uh, it's more just putting up with things like, like it's hard to be productive in a coffee shop. It's like, I can't believe I did what I did, you know, the years of coffee shops. And just, I guess because I had nothing else. Like, it's hard to really look at one's life and come to terms with the... I spent so much time working on abstract models. Now I look at it and go, like, what were they doing? Why was I doing that? Like, it, I think, it, like, I got in contact with you a couple of days ago, and it was just like, leaving losing all meaning it was almost like they zapped me and my motivation gone my belief in self gone my honor to my own work gone and i know it's physiological i know something's missing or but it's it's, it's insidious like it really is like it it's uh like it's like it's, it's like i got zapped yeah well exhaustion can do that pain can do that pain takes a huge amount of energy out of us for mm -hmm. sure but also uh disappointment takes takes a huge amount as well and um you're talking about being at home and being you know really being productive and i'd say private space for me is the most important thing for being able to be productive especially as a caring person and so you have a very caring person who is really driven actually you i'm talking about um and then you're surrounded by people who are carrying on with their with their normal lives um in their individual concerns and I imagine that, that that would drive a person like you crazy, um, you know? And so it's almost good to be in your private office sheltered from the disappointment that's happening in real time, you know? It's like watching the... Uh, the common cold, sorry, I mean, the coronavirus um, uh, spread in real time, you know, it, it, it's heartbreaking, <laughs> even though it's something that happens every day. <laughs> well, it's interesting to watch, like, there's a point where half this coffee shop is filled with people in masks, and half not. And it's, it, it's such a, a distinction, you know, of belief, and fear, and perhaps understanding, but just, you know, again, this divide. And then I was tracking just a few conversations. I haven't really got involved in anything online, but there was a, a couple of very strong sort of conversations where I knew the people in it kind of, and, I, and they're just whacking each other and insulting each other. And again, fighting over Trump, fighting over COVID, fighting over whatever the frick they're fighting over. And it just, it just seems like, you know, the stirring up the ants with the stick works and there's just constant, constant conflict between everybody. And again, old growth forest getting cut down and all these other things happening behind the scenes that are, you know, the, the pedophilia rings are, are getting off the hook to some degree. And, you know, it's, there's there's a it's just like a sickening it's, it's <laughs> like before this happened it's kind of like you're in the conspiracy you see it you know it and you're and you're sort of but you're on the fringe and as soon as it goes into the public and you're watching it and you're just watching it get worse and you're watching you know people wearing plexiglass in front of their like thinking how 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 bad could it get but it does get worse and you know it's going to get worse and worse and worse like i'm sure in the fall they'll come out with a secondary thing and they'll try to force vaccinations or and it's some at like at what point do you kind of like okay now i've had enough and now like like 
like it, the, the hardest the hardest thing to fight is the internal depression and complacency by being faced with something so massive you know? I've really had to put into in place um, a model for myself or maybe it is um, yeah, a promise to myself that no matter what happens in this earth, I'm better off doing as much as I can do. And in some way trying to detach the effect of that in the world or the success of that as my motivation. Like, I can't have that as a motivation, though you want to be effectual and you want to, um, you want to do things that are effective, right? But um, doing it for a different reason, doing it because it actually lights me up, doing it because as a spiritual being, uh, this is what I have to do. This is, you know, this is my walking. This is my normal movement in the world is that I have to at least try uh, to make a change and to be a, a bold voice and um, uh, really um, try to help. And so, um, because I face this too, um, you know, we may not succeed in saving those uh, you know, last 10% of the rainforest um, here in Vancouver Island. But um, I will be a hollow person when I die if I didn't try. And so when I die, I want to be a full person. I want to have exhausted my desires and and own it. That It's my desire to change. And as someone said, they really, we are the exception, you know, the people that actually want to work on themselves, work on things, uh, improving around them, we're the exception. Um, and so if we're going to be different, then we have to accept that that is, uh, that that's a, a, a self-imposed state and that we can't impose that on other people. I mean, we can certainly hope for it, um, but, um, if when I have imposed it upon other people, what is, I just get so disappointed and so disenfranchised that I just screw it. I'm done. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is the show to, uh, um, to show how dejected an activist can you guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> the honesty of it and the harshness of it you know well and what what can <laughs> whoa huh i just wanted to show you my fiance's uh artwork it's beautiful <laughs> And also, what does it take for each person? Because I think it's a different for a formula for each person. But to, you know, what is the daily schedule that it takes to be able to maintain this? Because we're social athletes. You know, if anything, the environmentalist is a social athlete. They are someone that has to be able to go in spurts, sprint, but actually over a long period of time. And so they're, they're also a marathon runner. And so what do we have to do? And I think we're seeing the end result of not, of having a life out of balance and uh, being, being able to think that you can actually take your personal energy and feed it into a project. And, um, yeah, you you ran out of the juice. Yeah. Um, what's your morning like? Do you wake up? Do you do you 
do you do some movement? Do you do some prayers? Do you do that kind of thing? Did you have a, a schedule and are you uh, grossly adverse to, um, you know, to a self-imposed schedule? I guess mornings would usually come to the coffee shop and do some work, right? Depending on on where I am. Because as long as I'm getting some work done, I feel like you know, I'm kind of at least <laughs> something viable in the world. Uh, afternoons, like lately I've been, you know, sort of working on my legs and knees and uh, sort of doing a bit of a practice, a little bit of a swim. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, 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 like, I'm not like, I'm not consistent. I've, you know, I'm coming to terms with what I've done to my body and having to, you know, that's probably the hardest thing is realizing the depth of my neglect with my body and such a focus on the mind. And, and then you reach a point where the mind goes blank where the significance of one's work disappears. And then all I'm left this shitty body and this you know it's it's hard to it's hard to work so hard on something and reach a point where it's meaningless like there, there's a depth of kind of I don't want to exist anymore like I guess I guess inherently it's that disappointment there's a disappointment that you can't even comprehend because it layers so deep and then when you actually get in touch with it it's like the you know how many things have i done and failed how many times have i sort of i can't even see the successes i can't see all i see is you know constant things where you see that humans get into conflict and it busts up and there you go like I had a very disappointing, like there's this last Yale Foundation, which is a group out of um, England where they're very spiritually focused and there's a possibility of a shared knowledge community. And I was introduced to them through this uh, man out of Hong Kong. And we had a, a meeting. We had a couple of meetings with them that went well. Pitched them on the inflow, pitched on shared knowledge community. They seemed perfect. They'd be there. They had 144 people. They'd been together for two years. They, they weren't reaching kind of their the level of creative output that they wanted. And so we had, they scheduled these three meetings. And I was, because I was kind of like offline and I was hurt, I just did, I wasn't focusing on the dates. And I thought it was kind of some vague thing in the future. I didn't look in the calendar and go, oh, this is when it is. So basically I missed the first meeting. And there was quite a, I guess, a disappointment or kind of like it just it didn't go over well. And then the second meeting, I'm ready to go. And they said, well, we did a reading and it looks like you need some more rest. So, you know, we'll tell you maybe remember the third meeting. So it was kind of like getting benched. And, and, and I felt like kind of going, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people out there in multidimensional, you know, uh, operating systems. Like you can just kind of go find the replacement, right? It was just a, you know, another disappointment. And, and it's funny, like death by a reading, like the irony of someone doing a reading on me to kind of say that you're out. It's like, fuck. So then they, they changed and they said, okay, you can come to the third meeting. I go to the third meeting and there's 11 people in there and they're all facilitators. And it could be that we're the 12 facilitators to do the shared knowledge community. And I, I just got the sense that Deep down, they have no idea what to do except one man who's uh, who's definitely who's the person I'm coming in with. Who's got the other side of the coin of what I've got. He's got the individual gene keys, and I'm coming in with the organizational structure. And inside, I'm listening to him, and I, I just I can't stop from thinking: is you have no idea what you're doing. Like they're facilitating this process, and they're going through the same process they've gone for two years with some more people. He's, that's my read. And I and again, I just have this. I'm sick of this shit. I'm just fucking sick. I, I, fuck it. Like, just fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. But I did, like, I stayed present. Let's try to be polite. Went through the exercises. And 
again, like that despondency or it's, it's just kind of because I went off the path of the old growth and I'm now, I'm seeing where I'm putting my time and distractions and going, you know, I just lost that thing I had, which was like that kind of like, okay, that's the mission. Everything's going to focus on this and that's what I'm going to focus on. And that's where my heart is. And because it crashed, there's just this sense of like helplessness or, or despondency that, that runs so deep because when you tap into that, like the deeper thing of what's going on with the old growth, there's just such a sadness, there's such a, you know, it, it just, it's, 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 it's like, this is one of the largest crimes that is being committed right now. And, and my own sense of, of losing the motivation and then the, the judgment, self-judgment of going, fuck, you just, you're falling into the trap. It's, um, it is so understandable, the reactions. And at the same time, those understandable reactions have to be cut short or it has to be a line in the sand where you're at the side of the wreckage and you're like, holy shit, I just screwed up. And I also, I got signed line because of, you know, human physical difficulty. All right. And I'm here. Okay. What can I do next to break that cycle, to get out of that? because it's so understandable, but there's a lot of very understandable reasons why people sink. And, uh, but they sink because they don't cut it short. They actually let the feelings drag on and they, they, they keep acting on their current feelings um, for as long as they exist, waiting for those feelings to run out. But those feelings don't run out necessarily. They can actually start to get perpetuated again. And then it's three months and then it's four months and you're, you know, you're still spinning because of, of a screw up that, that you had. I mean, no doubt, you know, you let, you let your eye off the ball, you drop the ball around you know just business fundamentals which uh you know you are a brilliant person but you still are um you're you're still governed by the same business principles as as all of us which is uh <clears throat> and i have screwed up and even recently around these things when we do not show up to an appointment it dashes people's trust in us and then no matter what, because their buy-in to your operating system isn't at the point where they, and it may never be at the point where you can miss an appointment. And then they're like, oh, don't, don't worry about it. It's just a crazy wizard. Because unfortunately, this isn't Harry Potter, you know. <laughs> we still have to act like business people. And, and my phone, you know, I'm, che I'm trying to get into better patterns of behavior around that. And if there's one thing that I can buy you, <clears throat> it would be um, this app called Things. Uh, I think we've talked about it before and it's, and it's a to-do app. So it is your to-dos that you have to do marked under all of your different projects. So say if you have 10 focuses, you can schedule those to do's when you have to do them each day, it shows up as a notification on your phone. And my day, like if you looked at my to do list today, I have 20 things listed on that, that task list for today. But they all are about uh, different projects. I have multiple project focuses. So that is something that I'd love to give you, uh, you know, as a, as one way, one, uh, one tool of doing that. Because mm -hmm. some, something that I've realized is if you want to be exceptional, you have to do what all the normal people do 
plus that. Unless you're willing to be, you know, free, uh, freakishly off in some specialty land. But that doesn't translate very well if you're actually trying to relate to groups of people. I find it amazing that the doesn't matter how let's say competent or intelligent you are, if your emotional nature falls below a certain point, you just you know there's a there's a within my gene keys I was I was told that I it, I, I have a very emotional nature and it's just my nature that you know at some point you're thinking like when's this going to change, but I. I don't think it's going to change. It's just, I, I get very emotional about things. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's what, yeah, it, it's your constitution and therefore, and I, I'm very, very emotional as well. Um, and also a part of my nature is to seek pleasure over adult responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, it is something that I, always have to be addressing you always have to be addressing your your weak point if you if you can't dribble with your left what are you going to be doing more than dribbling with your right you're going to be dribbling with the left in practice you always have to be addressing your weaknesses that's what mm -hmm. practice is about it's not about performing your strengths it's about addressing your weaknesses and um and that's a beautiful thing. I think that that's why, you know, it's something that I find so endearing about you. What, did I have so many weaknesses? <laughs> <laughs> no, is that, that you I have a very them. emotional <laughs> nature. That you have a very emotional nature. You're, you're a very feeling, caring, loving person. But because of that, you're driven by hope. <laughs> And so when that hope is actually, you know, broken or dashed, then you, yeah, then you can really crash down. Oh. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to find ways to consistently stimulate my hope and my focus. Um, and so I've been listening to people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., you know, Here's a guy, the most prolific environmental campaigner uh, probably of our time, uh, at least on a legal front, and, and just listening to these people and then acting. And uh, as Anthony Robbins says, to be happy, we don't need perfection, we need uh, progress. And so just some small, small wins. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what are some of the things that you ideally would love to be able to snap your fingers and have accomplished within this month that's coming up. August is a fresh month. It's a clean slate, baby. Uh, I guess getting the chat room uh, testable. We're sort of working on some side screens. We need to make one screen. Did I show you the... the the whole thing? Yes. Yeah. I'm super excited. The whole, the whole thing with you? Yeah. Um, like it's kind of like that where you, where you do have something like that's tangible, that's real, that has possibility. And again, when morale goes to a certain point, it's like, everything disappears like I, that's what blows me away is like when you're in your shadow when i'm in the shadow of I'm not sure which one because the gene keys points to 64 of them right and i seem to have them all um but when i'm in the shadow like maybe this one half-heartedness commitment and devotion it's such a it, it the worst part of it is that you feel it's going to be that way forever. And, you know, there's that sense of helplessness or hopelessness. And, and you know, when I'm in my better states, can't even comprehend this. But, you know, and it's hard to admit, you know, when you're 
focus so much time on trying to improve yourself and then you realize, oh my God, I'm back in this state. I can't get out of it. And some part of me doesn't want to get out of it. It's just, you know, there's another shadow element coming in. They're all working together to kind of go, okay, well, guess what? Fuck it. Like, just fuck it, fuck you, fuck the whole situation. Just fuck, 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 fuck. And, and part of it is kind of, it's like reading the stuff online and just knowing that that divide and conquer mentality is operating and it's working perfectly. Like I, you know, it's just, it's just this whole world is fucking arguing about the fucking mask. And meanwhile, back in fucking Dodge, you know, the, the cutting down the rest of the forest and doing all the rest of their bullshit, which they always get away with because they always create these illusions so that to get the masses completely fucked up about. And I, I, yes. I just, I just couldn't comprehend, you know, this whole thing about a mask. Like, like it just seems like the amount of stupidity in terms of like closing national parks and you know stopping the ability to go into nature which is probably one of the most health promoting things there are but saying we're shutting the parks down like like <laughs> like how how did they get away with this shit like why why are we just eradicating the entire governance system and getting you know 10 12 year olds in charge and they would do a 10 times better job than these morons that I, I just that <laughs> sorry I, I think ranting is very important and finally just a little drool at, at the end of it I think it's the appropriate answer it's um the inside scoop, Captain Sweep, this freaking tanks. <laughs> Yogi Shambu tries to help him, but finally says, fuck it, he's fucked. Okay, next, get, get a new co-host. Come on, let's get a new co-host. Never, never. Um, it is, it is, uh, it's, it's beyond broken. And, and I think the only, or the, the, the best thing to come out of this is the blatancy of it uh, is that it's so blatant. But then when it got even more blatant, all the craziness and all of the like, okay, Fauci is, um, you know, he's poised to make money off of a vaccine if it is implemented. So, but he's the guy who is, um, you know, that uh, we're taking our lead from uh, Google is invested in virus uh, in um yeah in vaccine uh patents and uh, and so that's uh but google are the people that we is the network that we get all of our information we do all of our searches on but they are actively and this is proven there they actively lead your searches away from any alternatives from natural care practitioners of any sort, including medical doctors, you know, they took down that, uh, you know, all those frontline workers, uh, sorry, frontline doctors um, who were, who were coming out saying, you know, we do have a medication that is proving to be very effective against this guys shut down, you know, they just shut down. Uh, Dell Bigtree and uh, Robert F. Kennedy, uh, The High Wire, which is, you know, my favorite show on YouTube. Uh, they were they were getting huge following um, and uh, they got too big of a following. It got too big and it was shut down. Um, and so but so all of this to say it's so blatant. And then you see, oh my God, but the, the root within so many people of just following along and wanting to believe that the system that is there, you know, that uh, it's, uh, it's all the authority that we hoped it was going to be. It's 
these are our societal parents and we should just follow along. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's been heartbreaking for me too. Um, and so you're not alone in it. You're not alone in just going, well, I guess, fuck it. Like, do we have 20 years before all of this just, you know, and then mandatory vaccines are going to happen or you can't drive a car? You know, am I going to end up like an Amish person where I'm not going to be able to drive? I'm not going to be able to fly anywhere. I'm going to be, you know, on some remote island just hiding in the bush, you know, from people, you know, running toward me with a, uh, a needle like that has been where my mind has gone and i've tried to go okay what can i do now okay I i'm going to go to my task list and try to do this because it's blind faith because we're blind we do not know what's going to happen next but at least i have faith in positive action um yeah so we're coming to the end of our brilliantly motivating. Very motivating. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> I feel really good. I'm going to go cry. <laughs> It'd be funny if you came in very motivated. And at the end of it, you're depressed too. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck, 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 fuck it. Fuck it. You know what? Don't even press subscribe, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't, Don't press again. like. No, no, it's good. It's fine. It's fine. I don't blame you. Uh, <laughs> no, I blame the CDC. Um, <clears throat> I, gotta, uh, I gotta go pee, which might be a good ending. Great. For this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know, express your innate needs, and I guess that that's how it, uh, it really... I wanted to summarize this anyways. Oh, wait, you, how about, could you keep talking and let me just quickly pee? Sure. You summarize, okay? Right. You're, you'll be way better without me anyway. <laughs> well, guys, let's look at what's been happening. We have someone who uh, has invested a huge amount into uh, creating a, um, a way of organizing people uh and he has um he's exhausted himself and so just a word to the wise that we all need to take care of all of our needs depending uh sorry regardless of our specialty we have to be able to uh, be a generalist when it comes to our health because no one else is going to uh, care for us. No one else is going to make us do what it takes to thrive. So um, I'm not sure where Elijah just peed. It seems like he, he just peed in the corner because there's no way that he could have gotten back from the bathroom in time. But uh, yeah, so just remember that, that we have our own personal responsibility is to take care of ourselves and then other people as they tell us in the airplanes put on your mask first and then help someone else re remove their mask ha <laughs> that little corona joke okay so we come to the end of the show <laughs> yes the yes. inside poop <laughs> the, the uh, inside hoop i think is what it's called yeah and uh well at least we did it that's something to be said kind of yeah maybe great way of starting a um a saturday and i yeah. really hope that everybody has an incredibly um indulgent saturday that they can indulge in um some practices so that they they can feel the relief of this world that's so topsy-turvy and ups and down right now and i guess we'll probably uh, be hopeful this wasn't live and i'll 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 uh, load it and i'm sure you won't put it anywhere neither will i <laughs> and Great. we can have this as a barometer of going this could have been our lowest show probably easily <laughs> <laughs>
and we can only Brother, get better, right? We can only get better. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing you sp uh, spending time. It's funny that you are, yeah, you're closer by, and I haven't seen you yet. Um, but hey, what do you do in the August twenty second weekend? I don't think I have any plans. Because the uh, one of the groups I was teaching online is putting on a a weekend a family kind of get together. Uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff. Maybe you could do some stuff. Um, could be. Anyway, keep that weekend open if you want, and you guys can come down. Uh, I'll send you some details. Great. Yay. Thank you, brother. Always a brother. <laughs> yes. It's been so nice. Thank you, Shabu. It's so good. Okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs>